Okay, good afternoon everyone and welcome to today's Zestcast and uh, for those of you who don't know me I'm Rachel McGuinness the founder of Wake Up With Zest and the Zest Wellbeing Hub and on the Zestcast we interview our expert contributors to the Zest Wellbeing Hub and also our special guests. Uh, I hope you enjoyed our last Zestcast on relationships with John Kenny the relationship guy. The recording is on the Wake Up With Zest um, YouTube channel but I'll put a link in the chat box in a moment. But today we are interviewing the lovely Greg Harvey from Greg Harvey PT. And um, you're going to talk to us about rediscovering your fitness mojo without trying too hard. So uh, if you're live on the call, please feel free to type in questions or comments in the chat box as we go along. And I will be monitoring it. And there will be an opportunity to ask questions. And I think actually if there's a small uh, amount of people live on the call, you, we can have a good discussion as well. But uh, just in case uh, there are background noises like cats, dogs, kids, doorbells with Amazon deliveries and whatever other deliveries, uh, if you could be on mute uh, when you're not speaking, unless we're having a discussion. So anyway, Greg, thank you so much for being part of our Zestcast today. So tell us a bit about yourself, what you do, and how you got to become a personal trainer. And you're also a massage therapist as well, because Indeed. you're my massage therapist. Oh, um. <laughs> <laughs> for my sins. <laughs> Myself. Uh, so I've been in the fitness industry now for about 10 years. And believe it or not, obviously I don't uh, look my age. I'm 31, believe it or not. So, I've, I've, yeah, I've been in the industry about... Spring chicken. <laughs> yeah, I'm literally full of tattoos. Everyone's not watching. I'm, I'm covered in tattoos. It's not good. But uh, no, I've been in the industry about 10 years. So, really, I kind of got into the industry when I was kind of... I mean, it kind of all starts when I was quite young. So, I played um, a lot of sport growing up. And a lot of the stuff, uh, I, was, I was very competitive. So a lot of the things with me is that I just I just couldn't sit still. I always wanted to play sport, and I always found that being competitive, I always wanted to take things to the extreme. Um, so growing up, I used to play a sport. Most people obviously even know what this is, but it's basketball. So I used to play basketball for many years, and I played um, at different sort of sort of levels growing up. But I played for England as a junior, so I, I sort of built up my I say fitness lifestyle as at quite a young age um and then from there i kind of got obsessed or with the training aspect um of just trying to be fit and healthy for for my sport um and it kind of got to that point where when i got to about 19 or 18 i was so obsessed with training and fitness and and health that um it just sort of came to me that i really wanted to sort of help people um and sort of just learn a lot more about the industry and learning more, more, more about the training and how to how to look good, how to feel good. Um, so I took a couple of courses when I was about 18, 19. I'm not sure if you can actually take courses that young now. I think personal trainers, no, I think you could study personal training from 18. Yes, I'm I sure. think so, yeah. Um, so back then, I was, I was about 18, 19, studied personal training and then ended up landing myself a part-time job in David Lloyd's. So I used to work in David Lloyd's in Milton Keynes. Um, and then from there, I uh, progressed on personal training, doing classes. And uh, with my high practice self that I am, I started just built up a bit of a clientele and then progressed on uh, and moved myself down towards uh, Berkhamsted, where we live, Rachel. And I started in a school gym running sort of uh, their facility and then uh, learning on the side sports massage therapy. So I've uh, progressed from doing personal training and sports massage therapy and building a little business in a little town in this town and then actually creating myself a little studio gym in the high street here and uh, yeah i've been personal training ever since so i've kind of like grew up a clientele doing sports therapy sports sleep tissue massage so it's not relaxing i'm afraid so if anyone no <laughs> and then uh uh, uh progressed on just with personal training so i've yeah, built up a clientele over years and then never looked back that is my story and you're just about to move, aren't you, to new premises? Yes. So over the last sort of eight years, really, I've sort of built up what's quite quite lucky. I've sort of just stuck 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 to things, and I've uh, I've built up quite a nice little clientele. And obviously, because of lockdown, it's all gone a bit down. 
but um, I've kind of outgrown what I've got. I don't know if anyone can see. This is it's a very small room I'm in at the moment, but I've got a little tiny basement gym um, where I've only got one piece of equipment of each, really. I've got treadmill, dumbbells and things like that, but it's only really fit. It was only, it's only really can fit one-on-one. -on -one. So for many years, I've only really done one-on-one -on -one personal training. Um, and now I've kind of like built my way up and decided to kind of take the next move, which is get a much bigger unit um, where I can start doing mini group sessions, outside fitness classes and things like that. So I'm moving to a gym literally two minutes down the road um, with a car park space and stuff. So yeah, yeah, so it's, it's progression for me now. I think it's needed. You're going to be moving just literally round the corner from where I live at the moment. So there'll be no excuses. So tell us why we need to keep fit. Do you know what? It's one of these things we, we it's, you've got to keep it really simple, really. I think it's just so important. I mean, there's so many different things. I think you could you could you can go to use this. I think as a as a country, we are we do we we don't really notice this, but we are obese. Um, I was just doing some stats a minute ago, and 67% of men are obese in the UK and 60% of women. I mean, that is just says it all, doesn't it? It's just one of those things where we're, as a country, we eat, we eat takeaways, um, and we, we just are. It's everything's so fast in the world. I think it's so important to, to really realise that we, it's so easy to eat rubbish and not stay healthy and, and and choose the easy exit and that's that's the thing um and obviously we the country we suffer from type 2 diabetes high blood pressure there's so many things that we do as a country and we are lazy i think yeah i think a lot of people don't realize how lazy we actually are um, that's right it doesn't seem to be like a part of our our culture so sort of growing up like it is on the continent and we were having a chat weren't we beforehand and apparently the UK is the third laziest country in Europe after Malta, and I think it's Bosnia. So we do better at being unfit than we do in the Eurovision Song Contest. We're in London. If you look at America, yeah. the whole, whole world sees America. You just see, it. I mean, how easy is it now? If you think about it, this is what's such a shame is, I mean, you, you can walk down the street and how many, how many places do you see? How many McDonald's do you see? How many Pizza Hut? How many... Papa John's, how many kebab shops? It's it's crazy. Fast food. It's easy to eat. I mean, I know this is about nutrition, but nutrition is everything. We are what we eat, and this is the problem with our with our our world. And and the, the, the question you ask, like, why should we exercise? It? It's because we need to be healthier. We need to get because it, we're gonna we're gonna we're, we're killing ourselves. And we're doing it to our own bodies, and it's difficult. I, I do understand a lot of people do say like, how do I get that? that oomph and it unfortunately it's one of those things where I mean we'll go more into this is having a train or having something you can do or go somewhere with a friend or and just to do a form of exercise and just to lift your body out even if it's just like go for a walk and stuff like that and this is this is the problem it's we switch off and we we can easily turn the mind and just say oh do you know what I'll do it tomorrow I'll start Monday or uh, I haven't got time, I'm too busy, I've got too much work on. But we need to really be more, yes, let's go, let's do it and, and get off that couch, get off that work desk and do, just do something. But yeah, answer your question is just, you just need to have, just to see, because it, it's, 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 I mean, it's all the stats, it's, it's, it's incredible. And obviously sleep and anxiety and depression is, is bigger than ever now. Um, and that needs to drop. And it's, I, I do hear a lot of people have a lot of issues and mental health issues and uh, people aren't, they're not getting fit, they're not getting healthy. So it's, it, there's so many things you can ask that question. So how do we get our mojo back? We get our mojo back. Inspire us. You know what? I think, big thing with me, this, I'm going to tell you a bit about myself. This is how I get my mojo. So I wake up early. I always try my best to go up early. I always set my alarm. As soon as I set my alarm, it's probably around about, I mean, I start, this is probably crazy, it was laughing, but I've got a lot of clients at 6 a.m. So to get, I mean, to get my mojo back, I always make sure I have some sort of something written down. So I, I wake up in the morning, I always have a pint of water. I don't know if you do that, Rachel, you're quite good at the sort of I thing. do. Well, it's kind of half a pint. Yeah. <laughs> I set basically things out throughout the day. And I, I have to set goals. I have to set something because if I don't and I don't have that mindset, 
I'm not going to do it. So if I set an alarm, I know that when my alarm goes off, I get up and I go and have a drink of water. I go and have maybe a bit of breakfast. And then I start my day. I mean, I know you do this where you go for a walk or you do some form of exercise. Or you do something where you, you get your body waking up. So you might go for. A walk. I mean, getting your mojo back is different. Everyone's different. And I think the, the only real example is you have to create that switch in your mind and just say, I have to do this for myself. It's not you're not going to do it for anybody else. So you have to set some sort of goal or something that, you know, that you have a root or it's a routine, isn't it? So you wake up. You get out of bed, you have a water, you have a bit of water, you go for a walk, you wake your body up. You might even do some form of exercise like yoga, Pilates, anything like that, or, or something what just gets your body going. So I think the best answer for that is to set a routine, is set a routine and write things down and make sure you're sticking to it. So important. And maybe have an accountability partner as well that makes sure that you are actually doing what you're saying you're, you're going to do as well. Uh, Tim's just asked, should we always have breakfast? Absolutely. I, I mean, this is the thing. This, this is where it goes. In the, in the, in the, it's, it's, it's so funny. So many people have different sort of, they sort of say different things. Oh, don't have breakfast. It's good for the metabolism. It's loads of, everybody is different. If you find that having breakfast is good for you, it wakes you up, it keeps you energised, as long as it's healthy. Is this the thing? If you want to start your day and you've got a long day ahead and you're, you're sitting in an office all day or whatever, or you're, you're moving around a lot, yes, 100%. I've always said to clients, no matter what, make sure you get up and have a good, healthy breakfast to start your day. Um, and things like porridge oats, um, a good form of protein, eggs, I mean, avocados. There's so many things you can eat that are healthy that are going to put a lot of sort of, they're not going to blow you out. And breakfast is a really important one because there's so much option out there. I don't know what you think, Rach. Do you, do you agree? There's so much I, I'm absolutely with you on that. Three meals a day, no snacking. Yeah. Tracy actually asked, what about doing exercise on an empty stomach and then eating? Or would you recommend always eating before exercise? She says, Thanks. sometimes fasting is recommended. Yeah, fasting. Like I said, again, I've seen, for example, I've tried fasting before and it doesn't actually fit well with my body. So when I fasted, I found that I actually get more hungry, but I actually bloat out more. Everyone's got different body types. And this, this, this is the thing. So it is good. And it's always really important. This is, this is it as well as to do your research and find out what works for you. So, yes, it is. It can be a good thing. It can be positive, but as long as it works with your body. Um, it depends how much you're exercising as well. If you was to go in the gym for an hour and a half, it's a long time without any food at all. So if you, if you find you do fast and you don't want to eat that breakfast, then you're doing an hour and a half of, of a workout, your body will feel drained for the rest of the day. So if you a hit session for 20 minutes or 30 minutes, yes, it can probably work quite well for some people. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I always have breakfast after I've done my hit workouts or yoga. Yeah, but I don't see why it's not. But I mean, it's quite important just to have, some, have a drink or a smoothie or something small that just gives you a little bit of sugar. To, if you're going to work, I think that will give you a little bit of a lift. But... Like I said, it's all about research. And I think everyone just needs to do a little bit of research on themselves and, and, and try it for yourself. Because you might find doing it for about three weeks, you might find, oh my God, I'm losing weight. I'm really doing well here. This is, this is something that works for me. But then, like I said, some people are going to try it and their body types are different and they'll do it and they won't like doing it. And they might find they put on more weight because they're, they're not eating enough and more regular food and um, little enough. Something that people say is have sort of a few meals a day breakfast and then you sort of do mini meals every couple of hours and things but research honestly it's one of those biggest things that people need to do and find out what works for you and that's probably the most important thing okay and how much exercise do we actually need do we believe the world health organization guidelines of 150 minutes a week <laughs> it's yeah i think i think on average i think everyone should do at least an hour a day I think it's the same again, everyone's different. 60 minutes, you could do it and make it aerobic and something that's going to give you that lift. I mean, a lot of people like weights as well. Um, that will give you that release on top. So, but it would also get the heart rate up. So I think 60 minutes a day, you can do, some people will really enjoy doing a little speed up. I mean, I was doing some stats earlier, it's incredible. And um, it helps lower blood sugar. If you do hit sessions, it improves insulin and sensitivity and stuff like that. And it's like, that is like a peptide hormone. 
and that is a big release and it helps helps with the liver and, the, and stuff like that. So people say hit, hit sessions and it's really important to do some research into that. It's little mini sessions of like 20 minutes a day. I mean, I know you do these morning sessions, don't you? you is it 20 minutes or? I'm quite lazy. Any time, <laughs> 10, 10 to 20 minutes, depending on how I'm feeling. But how do you feel? How do you feel after doing those sort of, because I don't really do, I'm not really the sort of person who does a lot of hit stuff. Mm. I do a lot how do you feel after doing sort of a 10 to 20 minute workout? How does well, it I, make like, I like them, um, even though I am a personal trainer, but obviously I, I don't do it anymore. But I used to brand myself as being the laziest personal trainer in the UK. <laughs> <So> <laughs> <laughs> However, yeah, moving on swiftly. Good, in, in a sense, because it's amazing. Some people do rate the fact that if you do these short, intense bursts, mm workout for like 10 to 15 20 minutes it can really give you that lift and also it does so much for your body and it, and it sort of it gives you that short intense and it's and it's nice because it's only 20 minutes mm. so i was saying that hit sessions are the way forward but every, like i said again this is the thing it's so important to do your research and find out what works with for you and what works with try new things um but I found with the, the hits, that has been the exercise that has worked for me the best after having personal trainers myself and spending, you know, an hour in the gym. So at the moment, it's it's yoga yeah. and and also doing doing hit. And, you know, I'm I'll be 58 this year, so I'm feeling pretty good for my age. I'm, I'm very fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it's, and it, I think as well, everyone's it's. It's important to make sure you're not just doing exercise inside as well. I think at the moment, I think it's made us realize a lot about how to do exercise outside. And a lot of people don't realize, but if you get up and you go for a walk for about an hour a day, get fresh air, it's incredible as well how much you can get your heart rate up, even to a nice fat burning level where it's like between 100, 100 beats per minute to about 120. And you'll find just getting fresh air, mm. even there's no harm and, and everybody can walk well not everybody but if you know what I mean it's, it's so important to start your day as well to get up and go for a walk or go for a light jog and even if you just walk and then do a little bit of a jog and a walk I just think that is important you can add that into that if you're doing that for an hour and then doing a little 20 minute session it, it's a no-brainer it's a no-brainer you can literally do an hour and 20 a day with ease mm. but it's fine yeah. and also it's just being out in the daylight as well is just really good for you because it just helps set your body, reset your body clock. Absolutely. It's one of those things you, I say to clients is, is if you do, people have just started with me and I say to them, if, you, if I want you to do like a, I want you to get up, I want you to set a routine, I want you to have a glass of water, I want you to walk for about 45 minutes when you get up, like you do, with, uh, and then and go for what, then do a little routine. And I say, do it for two weeks and just you just tell me how it made you feel. And if you obviously diet is on the side, get you being healthy and having a balance and you don't get anybody say, I didn't feel great after that. They, they seem to find that they have more energy throughout the day. They tend to use in their mind because they are exercising more, even if it is just walking and doing a little session there, they're choosing better options for food because they're constantly thinking, oh, I've got, I'm going to exercise today and I feel good exercising. So I better eat healthy. So yeah, it's all like a, a process, isn't it? Once you start, being healthier and you start going out for walks and start training, your mind automatically switches into a mode of let's be healthy, let's try and eat better, let's do... If you don't, if you're lazy and you're sitting there all day, let's be honest, and you're a bit of a couch potato or you're working, you, you want these easy snacks. And we do it naturally as humans. This is, this is the problem. This is what I say about takeaways and laziness. But once you get into that mindset of, going to doing exercise it's amazing how your mind will automatically tell you let's be a bit healthier let's try this let's try that let's maybe pick it up a bit more let's go for a longer walk or how about we go further I mean, we all know this when we go running this is the thing as well a lot of people love running and I'm, I'm, I'm all for running runners you go for a run and it's amazing automatically after a couple of weeks you go oh I might go a bit further or I might go a bit further again and we tend to find that we just get fitter you do it more and then you end up getting quite addicted to that, that rush and that feeling. It's just mm. like any guys. Once you start, you start to pick up the pieces. It's, it's amazing what your body can do. It doesn't matter your fitness levels. You, you just do what you can do. Go at the level you want to go at. And that's why having a personal trainer is so good. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Tracy says that I always feel good after exercise and I try to focus on that as uh, as the motivation to keep doing it, but find it hard to continuously feel motivated to keep up the momentum. Apart from a routine, do you have any other suggestions to keep up the motivation? You know what? I think people around you, I think that's a big one. If you've got supportive people around you, you've got a network of people who can sort of say to you, come on, let's go do this or let's go for a walk or... Or if you've got someone who can just, you can talk to about stuff and say, get them involved. I mean, everyone's got partners and things. And I think we have to communicate more and just be like, let's do it together. And, and it, when you're, this is the thing as well, when you're on your own and it's all in your head and you're sitting there going, oh, shall I do it? Oh, I can't be bothered. You, you can easily just tell yourself not to. And I think, I think we've got to surround ourselves with people who want to do it as well. I think it's quite important. I, I've been training for, for a while and a lot of the reason I love training as well because I do it with people and I go for a, I do exercise with, with friends. Yeah. Uh, exercise with friends. <laughs> but it's a difficult one. It's everyone has their, everyone has their, their lazy side and it's, it's, it's telling your, yourself that you've got to get up. You've got to set routines. You've really got to just get up and go and do it. Um, and there's no one else who's going to tell you do it but you. And that's, that's the biggest thing. Um, Personal responsibility. Yeah, it's 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 a tough one, but we just we have to make that we have to make that that go. Um, and then you can, it's, I know every, this is the thing as well. It's, it's so easy in our, in our life to make like an excuse, and that's it, isn't it? We can easily say, "Oh, I just can't do it." Oh, EastEnders is on. I'm not doing that. Or oh, I've got a meeting in an hour. I've got to go and do this. But there's no harm in in just why don't you set your day around your nutrition this is funny someone said this to me once so it's amazing when you think about it around your day this is really important lots of people they set their day around their work why don't we change that and set our day around our health why don't we say this is what i'm going to eat today i'm going to plan ahead this is what i'm going to do for exercise because you are a human body and how we energize ourselves is what we're going to show off in our in our work so why not you why do make that switch in your mind to go, I'm going to plan my day around my health. I'm not going to plan my day around. Then you, it creates, a, how much, of a, how amazing would that be if you did that automatically? You said, right, I'm going to do this today. I'm going to go and do that bit of exercise. I'm going to eat this today. I'm going to prep some lovely food. It would be amazing because your, your whole body, you'll feel great about yourself. No, I think that's, I, I like that. Plan your day around your health. It's, it's good, a very it's, good idea. Yeah. <laughs> How much are personal trainers and and do a lot of trainers allow um, sort of multiple people to train with them? So if you want to exercise with another member of your family or a friend or several friends, are yeah. trainers sort of open to that now? Yeah, absolutely. So there's there's loads of different options. With personal training, I mean, a lot of the, it, everyone's different prices. And this is the thing, when you're in the city, it can be quite expensive. I don't know if many people are from London. You can you can have trainers from like sixty pounds to maybe even over a hundred pounds. It totally depends where you go. But in more more in the sort of local village areas and stuff, it can be between sort of forty pounds and fifty pounds an hour. Um, but it is usually an hour session. Um, and a lot of the time now, a lot of personal trainers do create those other options where you can have two two on one sessions and you can you can split a cost. Usually, it's a little bit more if you have two. It might be say, for example. From for me, I charge sixty pounds for a double, so it's thirty pounds each. And then I do mini group sessions of like I will be doing mini group sessions of four people. And then that would be a little bit more, it might be like seventy. I can't remember what I've charged. And then you split the cost between the four, so you can have a group of or friends that you can all get together. And it actually that's probably the most, it's probably the best sort of sessions because you've got a few of you in it together and you're competing with each other. Everyone might have different sort of goals and stuff, but. It's so much fun because you have that, that, that chemistry with each other and it's something you can look forward to. Um, but everything, everyone varies. All personal trains vary, vary different prices. Um, like I said, it depends where you, where you live. Um, and then a lot of, there's so many classes out there. I mean, I know a lot of people probably realise this. You go to these sports centres, they've got Pilates, yoga. Um, and it's not all about, with, with trainers training as well, it's not all about having a trainer that just does weights or cardio. There's... There's so many different things out there, like yoga. Well, why do we, as humans, we don't we think, or guys especially, we think, oh, well, I'm, I'm not doing yoga, I'm not doing Pilates. But 
how important yoga and flies and stuff like that is is for our breathing our flexibility uh helps reduce blood bone density all these little things that it will, it will help with um, and as we get older those are the ones that are probably quite crucial so classes um, classes like yoga and Pilates, things like that, are there. they're so important to do. Um, but yeah, it varies really prices, but there are so many options out there. You can, you can easily go on Google, find out your local town and just type in personal training or classes in my area and then just find what works for you. And, and it's, it's, it's don't be shy and just go there and just have a go. I mean, if you don't like it, you don't like it. And you'll find someone who you connect with, hopefully, as a, as a trainer, as we know, Rachel, obviously, as you, you, you get clients and that there's some of them are very nervous. And it's, this is what I think is what I sort of, I thrive off. I like people coming in and not knowing what's going on or I've never done this before. And it's just quite new. And I don't know really how to use a treadmill. And, and that's what's so important is bring them in. And you sort of, you, you create a nice friendship with that person and you become a bit of a mentor and a bit of a life coach in a mm. way. That, that our yeah. Job. Yeah, I mean, before I got fit and healthy in my late 30s, I, I was allergic to exercise because I was traumatised at school by PE. So when I actually decided I was going to get fit, that's what I did was get a personal trainer because I didn't feel that I could be let loose in the gym safely. <laughs> I think I actually went on a treadmill and did the Bridget Jones thing where you saw sort of fall off the end of it. And I thought, right, I need to have a personal trainer. But it really helped me and it really motivated me to inspire me to get fitter because then I knew exactly what I was doing with all the weights I mean I didn't even know how to do a bicep curl I was so bad but it was just great to have someone to just make sure I was doing all the exercises correctly and safely as well it's amazing as well because a lot of a lot of people get nervous and I've, I've got such a collective of clientele and if you go on my Instagram I'll tell you my Instagram I've got a client who's 85 years old and uh, she's been training me for 10 years now. And she started by not knowing anything. In the gym. She literally came in and thought, what is it? She knew that she was getting older, she was getting a bit weaker. And I've trained her for 10 years. And she's, she's actually says to me, even now, and you'll go on my Instagram, you'll see some videos, that she's the fittest she's felt in like 20 years. And she's, right. she's actually, and it's bonkers, because for her coming in here, it was a big deal. She she really found it quite daunting. She was like, who's this guy? Who, what do I do? I've, I've signed up to something. My family have told me to do it. And it's incredible. You could take someone and you could, and it doesn't matter your your ability whatsoever. If it's a good trainer and they and they take care of you and, they, and it's not, and, and they really set some really good goals and, and they progress you in a, in a way that suits you and your body, you'll do wonders. And it's, and this is health. We're invest. This is the thing with personal training as well. I tell this to, to everyone: to a pub, buy a lager, or buy a meal out. For willing to invest money in health mm. and our of our life or of our bodies. And this is why I think it's so important to have. I mean, I'm a personal trainer. And I've actually got a personal trainer. This is what what people can't believe. So this is I need a trainer for my health is important for my week and my mental health so i go in there saying listen you just you just do what you got to do in the session and i'm not judging anybody i just want to just destroy my body and that's for me that's all i want and it's that's what i want i, I say just destroy me but the idea what i'm trying to say is that it's so important to have someone there as a mentor who can just help guide you um and i mean it's like it, it should be a part of you and your journey i think it's quite it's quite it's so important um but I'm, I'm a trader so it's easy for me to say it but it's don't think like that we automatically think oh i don't need a i don't need to have a personal trainer oh, i can do this i can do that but how far can you motivate yourself and if you can't motivate yourself then maybe it's time to to be looking for someone who can help in that journey for you yeah oh tim asks what's what's a bicep curl the bicep <laughs> Well, Tim, you see, if you do bicep curls, you'll look like Greg. <laughs> I've never done anything like that before. That's a joke. <laughs> you get a live demo now. Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, That's a bicep. That. Yeah, I can do them with the small weights. <laughs> <laughs> Little pink lady ones. <laughs> um, 
I mean, you've been working during lockdown, doing lots of online stuff. So have you been doing online personal training as well as your class? Yeah, so I've been doing lots of one-on-one -on -one and I've been doing mini group sessions for families. So I've just, tried, I've just came up with this, as soon as the first lockdown came, I decided to sort of completely adapt my work and I do these Zoom sort of home sessions. So with a lot of my clients, I, was quite, I, I said to them, listen, if you, if you find it hard to move, let's do a Zoom but I've done it with, with the whole family. So I'll be doing these one-on-one -on -one private Zoom sessions with people and, and, and their kids and just sort of getting them involved and doing these like mini sort of hit routines with some weights and stuff, depending on what they've got. But um, I've st started, this is, quite, this is quite a cool journey for me. I've been doing a lot of uh, big Zoom sort of uh, classes with, with groups of people. I've had some Zoom sessions. I think I've had between 30 and 40 people logging in. Um, where I've sort of built up clientele over the years um, and I've done classes in the past, I've actually got a bit of a, a collective WhatsApp group, which is, I, I call it my Tuesday, it's my Tuesday and Thursday classes. And everyone sort of, I, I have a particular WhatsApp group where I sort of fire out saying, who wants to do a class tonight? And people say, yeah, I'll do it, yeah, I'll do it. And I'll be doing these sort of uh, classes for five pounds per house. So it's quite a cool little sort of deal where it's, you just pay a fiver and you can have as many people in your household, you can log into your laptop and you can, you can fire away for 40 minutes with me in front of your screen. And uh, what's so fun about it is there's so many people on these, on these group chats that you've got kids, you've got the wives, you've got the husbands all in their homes doing these workouts. So yeah, I've, I've, I've created a bit of a new sort of system to my, or new business towards my, my name, which is the Zoom group sessions. And then yeah, one-on-ones have just been Zoom, really. I've, I've been a bit of outside, but hasn't been in the winter no but so the so the zoom classes are on tuesdays and thursdays yeah so tuesdays and thursdays i do one on tuesday at 6 30 p.m mm -hmm. thursday so i've actually got one tonight at 6 30 p.m and they're 40 minutes and basically i've always done it i've actually done it nearly for the whole year um and all it is is that i like i said i've got a whatsapp group i just add your number to the whatsapp group and then i just literally say hi guys the WhatsApp group isn't something that people just chit chat on it. Mm. It's just firing it out on Tuesday and Thursday saying, hi guys, there's a class tonight who's interested? And you, everyone just sort of says, yes, yes, yes. And I send the Zoom link. And then what you do before the session, you just send five pounds. And I just say, yep, you've paid, sorted. Um, obviously I have to go with a bit of trust because that's the, that's the thing with that sort of stuff. But everyone sort of does pay. So it's, yeah, it's good. It's opened up a lot of doors for me in other areas, which is, Fantastic. It's actually given me more work on other people who have been doing these classes have said, oh, I'll get my business involved. And I'm doing business <laughs> Zooms now for like three different businesses where I'm doing the same thing or different sort of routines and workouts. But for big businesses, so I've got a lawyer, I've got a solicitor firm in London called Hamlin's and I've got um, I've got a church group in Portsmouth and they're, they're literally a, a whole church group. They do one a week and uh, people seem to love it. And it gets them together and it means that they can communicate with me during these Zooms. Yeah, it's, it's opened up a lot of doors for me, actually. But are you going to continue doing them once lockdown is lifted? Yeah, absolutely. Good. Absolutely. It's, 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 and that's, that's it as well. It's, uh, I think people have sort of noticed that, yeah, you can't, um, you can't always have the time to get out of the house and go and do a class. And I think people work are going to be working home from more, more than ever now. And I think having those Zooms and uh, people have actually just... Once you've got it up and you, in front of you, people seem to love it. Once they do a few, they're just like, this is easy. This is great. So it seems to be the new, the new thing for personal trainers. Well, you don't have to go anywhere, do you? So you have a personal trainer that just comes to you. And they're, they're just so, and they're reasonable. I tried to do it. That's the thing as well. When I first started, I didn't want to make it too expensive. I wanted more for people just to say, well, do you know what? It's just five pounds and you can have as many people as you like in these classes and just enjoy it. And just have a laugh and you can do it with your family and you can sort of fire away you can ask ask questions and you can go through the zoom or you can go after and say oh i got I, I was stuck on that particular routine and what can i do and i'm, I'm that sort of with the classes themselves i just sort of say no lovely to have you online and you become a, i become a bit of a personal trainer for them even though they're only paying a five i'm happy to sort of communicate with everyone as long as they're obviously in the group and stuff and then um, i become a bit of a mentor for them as well alongside their day so you don't always have to pay me forty pounds a session a week. You can come on these classes and you can communicate with me then through that, and I can still mentor you and help you. So, um, like I said, open up a lot of doors, doors for me that way. 
Fantastic. Has anybody got any questions? You can unmute and we can have a bit of a chit chat. I talk so much, Rachel, isn't it? I'm terrible at it. Gregor, I've got a question for me. So what, what, what would you suggest for someone? I, I might know someone who's is, is in his early 50s, really yeah. unfit and probably spends too much time wa uh, working than anything else. What, 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 what do you suggest that person to get his fitness mojo? Depends what you like. What do you, well, it depends on the person, obviously, what, what do they like? What is it? Is there something, is there a form of exercise that they go, oh, I'd love to try that. I'd love to, is there, is there anything that excites, could excite you to sort of go, right, I'll start doing that. Um, but to have mojo, it's like, I think you just need to sort of be healthier or have some sort of like lift in yourself that goes, you know what, let's just go and do it. Like I said, set routines. Um, it's, 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 it's a lifestyle change, isn't it? It's a lifestyle change. And that's it. We just need to just have that, that, that power and that, 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 that mindset just to go, let's, 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 just, let's just do it. And let's do something that you enjoy. You've got to, you've obviously got to try and enjoy it as well. Yeah. Hi Greg, um, I just wanted to ask, I'm, I'm like a yo-yo dieter but with exercise, so I will sort of sign myself up for something, so either like a 10k run or charity, something or other, and then I'll go mad, I can't do anything halfway, so I will be out running 5-10k every day, go to absolute extremes from nothing, really unfit to but then I'll do the event, you know, the charity event or the run or whatever it is I've signed up for for a friend, and then I'll just go, right, I'm done. And then I'll do nothing for like four months, just like a yo-yo dieter, and then I'll start again. And I'll sign yeah. myself up for something else. How do you, it's like I find it really hard to just do a little bit. I have to go to extremes, and then I'll be exercising like morning, noon, and night to, to extremes. And I, you know, I go from being really fit to completely unfit yeah is it so because it lifestyle what's your lifestyle what's your work ethic like because it, a lot of the things is based around that is, is, is your work <laughs> if i can say about that's my boss <laughs> <laughs> with people's work life as well it could happen and and gen, general life it could take a, a lot out sometimes you can have bursts where you're like oh i'm not so busy at the moment or this month depends what you do um, and then just sort of saying to yourself, oh, let's, oh, I'm going to get fit, I'm going to get fit. And also seasons. This is the thing to mm -hmm. think about is summer. Is it something in the summer that you find? Yeah. Think that's yeah. what I, I think. don't like, like cold. And, like, I won't go running you know, in the dark. You know, I find it I like that's being right. on my own outside running in the dark. So as soon as it gets light... So do you find that you, you tend to be like that? You get more into the fitness stuff? more the summertime than the winter time so yeah probably because it's yeah. warmer and lighter yeah yeah it's 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 difficult it's it's trying to tell yourself that you have to if you if you're quite with someone like i'm a bit like that where I, I find that if i've got if i've got that mindset and i'm like all in and i just go 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 there's always going to be a time where you say do you know what i'm going to drop off and i just haven't got the energy or it's cold or it's down it's it's trying to then just tell yourself that you just don't give up. And it's, it's as simple as that. It's like, it's winter, it's cold, but join a gym or, or find something that, or try and just sort of keep, keep things ticking over and, and just setting new goals. I think we can easily set a goal for something. And then once we've achieved that goal, we could say, actually, do you know what? I've done that now. And, oh, I don't know what else to do. Oh, I'm just, oh, I'm working so hard at the moment. I'm just doing this and I'm busy and my life's, life's busy now. And, it's, it's trying to tell yourself that, no, let's set another goal. Let's do something else. Or let's now focus more on the, it's cold outside. Why don't we go into the gym and start doing some weight stuff? Or, or let's have some other goal in the winter. So it's difficult. I know it's difficult as well with, with seasons and, and stuff because we are in a country where when it is cold, we just don't want to do much exercise. Um, it, it's, it's being able to tell yourself, you, you have to set something, some new goal to keep yourself ticking over. Um, but if it's something like running you like, and is it running you like? To be honest, I'm, I'm really sporty. I was an athlete when I was young, so anything. I literally will go from playing football, squash, running, any, I literally love, 
can't do anything. I'll be, if it's warm enough, I'll be in the water, canoeing, anything. Yeah. And that's it. It's, it's finding, it's finding that switch. You've just got to just say to yourself, I can't, I, I shouldn't give up and I won't give up. Um, there's only so much we can, we can tell ourselves to keep it going. But I mean, it just, you've just got to find new goals and find something okay. else you can sort of do. So if there's something new you want to try, even if it is in the winter, like I said, yoga, Pilates, or try something different that maybe you go, I haven't done this before. Well, let's try that. I haven't got that motivation at the moment to do running because it's too cold. So let's try something completely new. Um, but it is hard. I think weather plays such a huge role in that, doesn't it? Especially in our country. If you think if we lived in a hot climate, um, you look at the Australians and how they, how they, they live. It's much warmer climate out there. And, and then a lot of them are very healthy. You go to Australia, I mean, I've been to Sydney and everyone's just in the parks, going for walks, doing exercise. There's exercise parks everywhere outside. And, and it's, I think we, we're going to struggle in our country with, with the weather and, and not having that motivation to go, oh, we've got to keep this up, we've got to keep this up. So my advice to you is try new things. I think it's important to maybe set your mind on trying to do something completely new. And if you do like running in the summer, that's fantastic. That could be your goal for the summer. But in the winter, maybe we might want to try going into the gym and lifting more weights or doing some step classes or swimming more. Um, and just trying to trying to keep just just say yes to things. And 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 yeah, that's it really. It's it's a difficult one. It's a difficult one. Anybody else got any questions? Can I just ask, Greg, the Zoom group sessions, are they like aerobic style or is it hit? Yeah, so it's an aerobic style. So it's, it's a big mix. So I do I do a big warm up. And then I usually a lot of the stuff is we obviously most people haven't got weights. So it's it's short. It's kind of like mini sort of. So I might do a minute of press ups, a minute of star jumps. And then say, for example, a minute of like that sort of stuff is. But it's like I do like around time and then I have a bit of a red like mini circuit okay using, using your body weight so we have to obviously make it, it, do that we haven't got a lot of equipment mm. so they're just like mid they are hit sessions in a way a couple of minutes on one route and then you're like rest and then you go back in again completely different and it's full body so it's a bit of legs I might do a bit of arms um, Quite funny with with some of the weights. Most of them haven't got weights, so I get people to hold two bean cans. They hold the presses with bean cans. And so, um, it's a big picture. Full body workout. Um, it is quite aerobic as well. So we do. We might where it's like high knees on the spot. Might do press ups, which you might get the heart rate down a bit, and then you'll sort of do some reps and things. But um, yeah, it's kind of a mixture. It's kind of it's it, I, I suppose, and it's. Just mini sort of circuit style training of using the whole body. Okay, thank you. Anybody else got any questions? Um, I'm just, just going to ask Gregory, if I may. So you say that the UK is one of the laziest nations. Yeah. Who, who, who is who is the, the, the hardest working nation? Yeah, it's, we said this, didn't we, Rachel? Japan. Mm. It's Japan. Oh. They're, they're, it's, they're, they're smashing it. They're like well above the game. I don't know why, because it's like sumo wrestlers love Japanese, isn't they? But they are the fittest nation in the world. Um, if you look it up on Google, I, I was looking up just before. I just could, yeah, it's incredible. I just think they're. If you can imagine how this is the climate. They've just got such fresh food. They they just. I mean, it's. I don't really know much about their culture, but obviously you can sort of just imagine that their lifestyles are just so incredible out there, isn't it? They just drink and eat, eat much more healthier. They've got more spiritual. They look really into their religion and. And uh, I mean, yeah, Japan is the answer to that one. It's quite an interesting. You can imagine it. Can... If people want to get in touch with you, Greg, how do they do that? So uh, I've got an Instagram. This is Greg Harvey PT. So uh, it's just great. It's literally Greg Harvey PT is one word. It's on my Instagram. Or you can go through my website. I do have my number of websites and everything. So it's www.gregharveypt.co.uk. Um, and yes, yeah, so all my classes and everything is through my Instagram. So I do a lot of promoting and business stuff through the Instagram where I just sort of promote. Um, that's on the Greg Harvey ET. So if you've enjoyed this, then please post about it on um, social, uh, tagging in at Wake Up With Zest on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And you can use the uh, hashtag uh, Zestcast.
Our next Zestcast is just under a week's time. Um, thanks, Kathy, because you reminded me that I'd made a mistake in my newsletter. It's uh, Wednesday next week, March the 3rd at half past four, and I'm going to be interviewing the former Irish international rugby player, Peter Bracken, who's also played for Wasps. And we're going to talk about what the workplace can learn from well-being in rugby. So that's going to be a, a fun Zestcast. On the 11th of March, I'm going to be speaking to someone called Gail Morgan, who's a personal stylist and image expert. And we're going to be talking about personal branding in an online world. On the 18th of March, we're speaking to a health and fitness expert, Sandy Donnelly, and we're talking about the benefits of juicing. And that's something that I've actually recently got into. And then on the 25th of March, we're speaking to a women's health and hormone expert called Nikki Williams. And we're going to be talking about perimenopause and menopause. And we're actually just confirming Zestcast coming up for uh, April, uh, May and June. If you want to keep up to date with all the Zestcasts, then you can go on the Wake Up With Zest site. Just go to wakeupwithzest.com forward slash speaking and you'll be able to register there. Or they're all on the hub if you're a member of the hub. And then just very quickly, if you're having trouble sleeping at the moment, uh, we're launching Zest Sleep School. Uh, that starts on the 19th of March. So if you want more information, just go to wakeupwithzest.com. Greg, thank you so much. Have you, got, have you just got three tips that you can give us before we go? Oh, three tips. Drink water. Yep. Think about your food throughout the day, so pop head. And then try and do, as best you can, 60 minutes of activity a day. Hey, voila. <laughs> so uh, thank you, everyone, for attending. Uh, we'll send recordings out in the next day or so, or you'll be able to see them on the Wake Up With Zest YouTube channel. So have a great rest of the day and see you on the next Zestcast.